right, so we made our return to the ocean for the first time in about a week. And I encountered a fish I've never caught before. They're called ribbon fish. They look kind of like serpents. They look like something out of a horror film. They're very strange. Paper thin fish, as you see it right next to a Spanish mackerel. Here's the day of fishing. It's a pretty, it's a pretty lousy one overall. Um, and then we're gonna try to cook these up. Dream come true surf launch. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Our target is, um, target's kind of everything, but Spanish mackerel in particular, fluke slash flounder, and redfish. And maybe spadefish and sheepshead too. That's the five for today. That looks pretty good. It's definitely heavy structure. Anything that's not a spinner shark will do just fine. Damn, it bit me right off. I think I found some bluefish. Holy crap! It's a ribbon fish, right? It's supposed to be good to eat. Really? Yeah. It's a good amount of life on this piece. Oh. What? Damn. Big ribbon fish. Damn, they just freaking cut your line like nothing, too. Damn, I just like instantly. Instant. I don't think that's a marketing strategy that's effective for me. It's catching rib ribbon fish on my shafts. Boy. Damn, look at those teeth, man. See ya. Oh, spades! Up top, up top, way up top. Alright, I gotta go smaller jig. That's what I'm gonna do. So much for maybe those are spade fish. This is a interesting situation. Yeah, the whole school follows it up too. Like looking at my screen, man. What a gnarly looking fish, man. never seen a fish like this in my life. <laughs> this fish looks like it belongs in like a, a thousand feet of water. Yeah, it does. Serpents, man. Alright, one more. I'm not quite sure if they're fun or not. I haven't decided that. <laughs> there it is. I'm 90% sure this is considered a ridiculous trash fish. Well, it doesn't look like this day is turning around anytime soon for us. I got spiked by an oyster toadfish and it's starting to feel a little funny. And Garrett's got sunscreen in his eyes. Sunscreen blinded. Sunscreen, damn. I can tell your eyes are, your blood should just throw it in there, I'll put it in there. All right, you're good. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're good. You're good. Yeah, definitely an unfortunate day of fishing for me. I think, yeah, right. I think we picked the wrong location for sure. Not even good quality summer fish. No sheep's head. 
No smaller reds, nothing. It's getting pretty lousy today. So uh, I think we're packing it in. I think that's the, that's what we're doing. Definitely pretty bumpy. Yeah, by far the most unique fish I've ever encountered. Um, say they're close to 30 inches long. I mean, look how gnarly that thing is. Just cutting along the backbone there. Yeah, there you go. Uh, we'll just clean this up a little bit. Um, I feel like that's the better way to clean them. This is definitely a quantity fish. Hey, look at the flesh, man. Look how nice that looks. They got a layer of pin bones. It's right about here, it seems like. And then that's it. I mean, this is what I scraped off with the spoon. So, didn't lose much by filleting it. All right, this one we're gonna do a little differently. This one we're gonna gut. There's really not much going on in this guy. All right, scaleless, gutless. On this day, they were super abundant. If you wanted 100 of these fish, you could have absolutely caught 100 of these fish. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna just kind of chunk it down. We're just gonna kind of uh, let these sit. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt on them, wrap them in some paper towels, throw them in the fridge for a little bit. And yeah, ready for frying. All right, we're gonna do this one super quick. Uh, this will probably take like two seconds to cook. I'm just gonna quickly flash fry it. All right, so we yanked these off the pan. I just fried them in butter and a little bit of olive oil, uh, about two minutes aside, so it was real quick. And that's really about it. Really, really simple stuff. I'm just letting it cool off. This is a popular fish, actually, when I was doing a little bit of research just now. Um, I honestly didn't look into it too much, but it's popular in Korea and Japan as a, a raw dish. I saw a lot of sashimi dishes, and I asked Dan Sushi every day about this fish. And he also said, really good eating fish, very popular in Asian cultures. Um, hey, that fried up easily. All right, we're just going savage here. Yeah, it's very good. Closest fish I can compare it to, we had a fish up north called Ling, L-I-N-G. People called them hake, squirrel hake. Uh, there's a couple different species of them. It's exactly what this reminds me of, hake. So the flavor is very good. Yeah. It's one of those fish that, um, at first look, you would never probably keep it. Because it just looks ridiculous. It looks like there's no meat on it. So we've done quite a few of these trashier themed fish. Um, so that's really surprising. Um, I think it tastes better than flounder. I like it better than flounder. Uh, it's definitely one of those things you get creative and do your own thing with. There's no... I don't see much of a rule book of how to prep that around here. That was easy to fillet too, man. It's just, whoop, you know, just take a knife and cut it. Interesting, really interesting. All right, let's see if we can screw up the other one right now with the bone in, so here we go. You fry anything in butter, it's good, right? Here it is, bone in. Might be the better way to prep it. Bone in is obviously the easiest way to get the maximum yield out of your fish. Um, it's totally different to eat a fish with a bone in versus a filet. Eating a fish as a filet, you're shoving handfuls of food in your mouth, french fries, you know, going to town, versus eating something on the bone, which is a little bit more of like a process, right? That's cultural differences, etc., etc. Based on how I got on those fish, and versus the meat you'll save, I would filet them in the future. I know that might be kind of looked down upon to filet these fish, as a lot of people will eat them with the bone in. I saw preparations of them being filleted, I saw a lot of different preparations, so um, it's each their own. That, that's an interesting fish, man. So, um, I think people get offended by that word trash fish sometimes. Um, it's definitely a trigger word. Uh, but really what it means at the end of the day is like, you have an intended target and you're catching this bycatch that you don't want. I guarantee you if all that was left in the ocean was smooth dogfish, sea robins, and oyster toadfish, all three of those would be primo targets. But usually you're targeting flounder or redfish, which are more your, your goldfish. And having these fish get in the way, you know, it's, 
it's like a tier, what you can prefer. They're in the way of the, the targeted species. That does not mean they're not edible. The oyster, I know the oyster toadfish is one of the best eating bottom fishes. There was a reason that was like $12 a pound back in Brooklyn. This fish was sold fresh back in New York either. So there is a commercial market for these guys, just like there is for lazy fish, lazy fish, lady fish, um, all these other fish. They all have commercial markets. Um, because they're pretty good to eat, but at the end of the day, you know, they not, might not be what you, you want to set out to catch. Definitely a meat fish, you know, so uh, I hope you enjoyed. That was pretty interesting. All right, guys, I'll catch up with you guys soon. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys very soon.